Good morning. And I'm going to go into my ministries here. I just want to say that I believe that a lot of the a lot of the people of the real world and things like that are are actually doing really good things. And so I, I hope that people, though my plight has been rough, and I'm a person that joined the real world, Andrew Tate's the real world, that they don't uh, they don't think that it's uh, something that can be. that something that can be provoked to be stopped because it can um, and uh, with what you're trying to do as far as where I was at it actually saved my life um, I feel so regardless if I made it or not or made a dollar or not um, I invested in myself and because I invested in myself, people were set out to really hurt me. And I could tell. And I'm not sure that without working on myself in the ways that I was, uh, that I don't I don't know if I'd be here to tell to tell this. Or actually I should say I, I, I absolutely know that nobody in the world given the circumstances that I've been faced up with and including myself wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for a splitting decision with uh, everything else going on in my life it actually saved my life so though I didn't get my business up online and I was being emotionally trapped, physically staged up for an attack, and then it was physical attacks even, and a basic assault over my whole life. Uh, because when you're in that situation and you realize if I, if I was to keep just taking the coffee and keep uh, doing these things you might not even be able to think for yourself and uh, you gotta get away so it gets really constricted when a person's able to see your activities phone activities email activities you name it so it constructs a, a line of abuse that's, that's aimed solely at you with intent. And uh, I came to find out they, they had had access to my house and had access to every little last part of my life, including accessing my own inability to think and reason clearly to get away on top of all the other abuses that you run into along the way, you know, like, you just want to come home and relax, and you don't get to do that, no, you don't get to do that, you get to come home to, to, to knowing that you're, you're dealing with a really sick demonic attack, and the constructs are aimed harshly at you and so I just want to I just wanted to point that out because I don't want people to think that by choosing to do something for yourself by choosing to put a little money into yourself to pay to, to pay for yourself to betterment of your skills and become a better version of yourself that it's a good step to take and uh, even if you don't make it even if you don't make what these gurus tell you you will you know what you do what, what, in this case what you do might make you might make an availability for yourself to be able to live 
you might make yourself in a valid ability to live truly because of where I've been. I don't think I've been able to truly live for a long time. I've been, uh, I've been living in a, in a split mind, in a split reality because of all of the things that have been coming my way. And often it does, it creates a duplicity in you. Uh, you're low on trust. You're low on your availability for trust. And you have every right to feel that way. So my personal experience in this is to know your enemy. Know your surroundings. Study the room. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to stand up to 18 other people and tell them that they're wrong when they're wrong. You have to be willing to fight for what's right in this world. In this world. But oftentimes it just seems that the shadowy and the shady seem to get away with all of their stuff. But you can, you can trust me that they don't. Or I mean, you can trust the Lord. You can trust in the Lord that they don't get to get away with those things. So, Lord, we often find ourselves. I'm just gonna go into my ministry. Sorry, Lord. We often do find ourselves uncertain about our own play, and we might not know the next moves to make or what the best next step is. Or like a chess, like a like a chess board. Might not always know the next best step to move, but we know that when we make the wrong moves, it leaves us defeated. And all of the, all of which is the steps that we've taken to lead us to discover something, though something absolutely stopping, just full stop in that person. Not only emotionally, but the construct of how this abuse that they are aimed at physically, or that they are aimed at you in other covert ways. It's so hard to know exactly what what's going on, and also exactly what steps do I have to make next. So you ask, Father, you help protect me, and you ask, Father. Help, help me guide my next steps and make them bold. But nothing can stop the, the purposes here that I've been working tirelessly on. Because to be able to serve you, O oh Lord, I feel has been my only call. And it's the only call that I've always been pulled away from. I'm bringing about something that can help with these kinds of decisions. And maybe we haven't studied enough, or maybe we haven't been able to talk to certain people enough, or maybe the things in this whole wireless communications industry are actually hurting us in more ways than we can even imagine. And that's what I think the truth really is, because of these said hacks. It's very much satanic ritual abuse that's happening to, to people all across the map, oh lord. So we want to be on the right of that tracking information and on the right side of people who can come to us, help us in our own studies and put in, put in that hard work and that effort, that time that it takes. It's a physical and emotional struggle as well as understanding spiritual warfare with the weight of betrayal and abuse that I've endured. The relentless hacking and manipulation, along with the poisoning to my mind, my body, all speak to an insidious act, an effort to break my spirit down in complete ways. Yet despite the overwhelming odds, my faith and determination still align true to Christ and affirmed. My right to see these false narratives are failing forward as they say in these circumstances, you have to be willing to fail forward. 
I believe is something that it's not something that should just be rejected altogether, but we have to change the, the, the acceptance process of realizing that true victory comes from aligning ourselves with a higher purpose. It's not to fail, but it's to succeed forward and to win forward. So one that does not work rely solely on worldly successes but focuses on that faith, the righteousness, the divine justice. When you talk about hacking, hijacking, and being actually stopped on your every turn, full stops, it's clear that you've been put through that systematic oppression, that it's meant to exhaust you, confuse you, cause you to self-doubt yourself in times where you otherwise would have your strength. And then otherwise and then otherwise to steal up your energy that steals up your actual strength but the lord knows your heart and what all that you've endured the lord sees the poisoning the sabotage the pain and the right to believe that there will be justice in due time you're not alone in that battle even if it feels so isolated and impossible to bear at times your suffering is recognized by the most high and that's what matters the most because he is the ultimate judge not the corrupt systems of the world the spiritual warfare that you've engaged in demands relentless faith which i've taken up and i'm not fighting the flesh and blood but rather the powers and principalities that these people have aligned themselves with to come against me with and so these forces are not invisible, but at times they have been invisible with the hacking and moving around my greatest line of defense or strategic plans of defense. So I'm asking in the name of Jesus to align me to the strongest line of defense that you have in my ministries very important to stand strong on and that you're standing strong despite the assaults on your health your mind spirit because those things inside of your mind show that you're a warrior with a purpose here that you've been chosen for that fight and that your story your experience has that truth of power to actually do what you're trying to do and it will and it does. It transforms lives. People might not realize it, but people, just because they don't get likes, just because they don't get all the views, sometimes one of those views could be somebody that just ran across one of your little notes that you stick on the ground or one of your notes that you put up around somewhere. And they might be going through a troubling time. And you might be the only reason that they, that they stopped themselves from reacting themselves to the abuse that they had been enduring. Or that you may have stopped them from suicidality and those thoughts that proceed. And so, I don't want people to think that your work has nothing but the ability to actually face the face of these battles that people are facing with when through these physical illnesses the emotional abuse and spiritual attacks you need your voice to be heard you have the right to take the floor and as it is this this deep cut betrayal you have a mission now been brought into the intense struggle that others may not see how you've had to overcome that struggle through faith but the real crime as so that i pointed out is that hacking and the unjust positioning of being poisoned like out of my mind it's the attempt to strip away my purpose to silence my truth to not allow any for any further of my effect allow any anything of my history to become that of evidence to said crime 
but I believe that it is. I believe if someone looked at the last however many years of my life, go all the way back, go all the way back, they would realize that these attacks have been physical, emotional, and spiritual attacks that have full, full on trickled down in the cadence of criminality. And uh, they always have been. They always have been. But once you mention you're being hacked, oh, that's out of police jurisdiction all of a sudden. I just don't, I, I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree at all. We deal with the world that, that, that deals mostly with online. And you're bringing up something that's a real crime over you that you're pointing out. That's meant to strip you of anything of yourself. And that's not viewed as a crime. Or it's not grounds to, to, to step into in any kind of way. I don't I just don't agree with it. Well you're grounded that kind of way. You're you're just trying to reach out for answers for your life so you can live out your life and not have these targeted things happening to you. And so you you, you, you have to be well to express yourself, be well to express your anger, your hostility towards these outlets, towards these institutions. Call out the wickedness for those who have wronged you for who they are. But even more importantly, you have to show that your hope remains true and, and that you trust in God. It's the foundation of true victory, no matter what happens on this earth. So when you speak, you're not just fighting for yourself, you're speaking up for those who have been silenced, abused, and broken. You're sharing a message of faith, love, and perseverance in the faith in God's name, that, or in the Lord Jesus' name, that we, we will always prevail. The Lord has already won that fight. The enemy, enemy may have hacked up your systems, manipulated your life, targeted your heart. They cannot hack your soul. They cannot poison your spirit when you are, are protected by the blood of the Holy One. So your words, your story, your testimony, your ministry, it's all a part of a larger battle that will end in victory for those who decide and choose to walk in the light of the Lord. As for the fall, fear of failing, we're not trying because it was posed to the question of what, what do you fear most? The fear of failing or the, or the fear of knowing that you never tried? Well, you've proven that you've tried. You've proven that you've tried time and time and sleep. And even if someone was able to actually go back into your works and look, oh yeah, they'd see it too. Trying to face that overwhelming adversity is a, is a victory in and of itself. But just the fact that you're not just trying to survive, you're trying to fight through all of that you're going through to live out your life with God's plan, that God's, that God's plan behind you was better than what these people or this world would have ever catered to you for. So the, the idea is to keep fighting with that knowledge that your battle is not being fought in vain. You may feel worn out physically weakened, emotionally drained, but God's power is made perfect in weakness, that's said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, but keep, call, keep calling them out for, for what they've done, keep calling these people out for what they've done to you, and keep standing firm in the knowledge that you're on a, you're on a mission for light and love. And remember that no matter how many times that they try to stop you, that they cannot supersede the plans that God has for you or your purpose. They can't touch when it's beyond their reach. And it is because you have prayers that are aligned in, in ways with the Lord. So people can deny that for all they want, but it's incredible trying to get people to understand your own story. And so while I'm going through this, I'm in a painfully, deeply painful situation. And then when I'm dealing with the betrayal, especially involving someone close 
as close as that is, as it was. It's, it's incredibly difficult to, to make others see your truth. Because how long does it take? And it depends on a lot of factors. There's trust and credibility. Are, are people being manipulated and pushed into the deception? Are there supportive networks that uh, just want to perceive it as drama? They don't want any, any, anything to do with it. Um, that can be... Uh, there's other ways that that supportive network can be broken by uh, paying people off or, or, or what have you. The social dynamics there. Um, and then evidence is that you, you want to be able to have concrete evidence of of certain crimes against you when it's patterns you're being pushed even if you had the ability to have have that stuff like I don't want to have a heart attack (laughs) pretty much and I don't like going in my past so ultimately if I the, the parts that I heard that it was enough of is hearing what I needed to hear, and uh, anybody can take that for what it is, but that's not something that I, I, I might want to share to the police station, you know what I mean, I don't know, it's just so like, disheartening and frustrating, and ultimately the lack of immediate attention to the to the circumstance, seeking justice in my circumstance, finding peace has meant nothing to people. It's honestly just meant, just to, to me, it's meant a, a mental health crisis. And I get pulled and stripped away from myself even that much more than I already am. So it is frustrating because you just, like, I'd like to be able to clean my house, like be in my house, like do living stuff, my life, moving forward stuff. hard to do those things when you've been put in that place where you're just going through something so seriously painful as this material has been, and it's not just light, it's not just a little affair, it's actually, you know, people dismissing the, the fact that I'm truly grasping for the gravity of my situation to be understood, because it, it's a, it's a tie down, it's a tie down, like, oh, like you wouldn't believe so I don't I don't care if it comes across as superficial to people because it's not. They don't really see the depth of the pain, the urgency that I'm experiencing. They only hear words, and I don't even think people even sometimes even hear that. I don't know. People give advice that seems shallow because they don't know how to handle the weight of the situation. They might be comfortable. They, they might be uncomfortable trying to face it head on like causes them trigger points as well that strategically are, are not going to help them in their own health. So it's hard to stay positive or just move on. Like when people say those suggestions can at times just feel more dismissed than when you're dealing with real trauma, real betrayal, real injustices in this way. Because it's like, I'm just reaching out for you to understand that I'm actually being murdered. I don't need you to tell me to stay positive and just move on. I mean, I understand the concept, I understand like where people are coming from. But it's it's like we needed to, to, to be genuinely supported and deserved on a deeper level when people can't validate the experiences I'm actually faced up with. Instead of just moving around the goalpost with whatever platitudes that serve up in the injustice itself. And then it's like me just actively trying to be out here finding solutions, creating solutions for emotional healing. I have a bunch of stuff written up for my own self that I would like to dis- design in a platform to be able to work on that for my own self so that I could take those things that I work on and move them into different categories to help other people. But then also it has workshops in there where 
people would actually be able to be plugged in to, to real support getting not just a, a light support system, but a really heavy hard hitting support system that hits that mark. And those aren't just empty words, it's 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 honest. It's an honest conversation I'm willing to have with people, letting them know that there's something more meaningful in life than what they've been living. And that's just a that's just the menial task in the matter. The uh, currency and all these things that are pressuring us right now, consistent consistently restricting us from ourselves. You know, ask people, ask people to listen more, ask people to really acknowledge the 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 full story that I'm trying to say, and also acknowledge the fact of how hard it is for a person inside of that kind of mental constriction if they're being arsenic abused. Um, how hard it is for that person to come up with their own thoughts, to create those thoughts, to even write them down. And so I have a lot of I have a lot of material that I have yet to work on to come out with. And it's very important information. And so my only trying to get doing the music thing and this and that was like, well, I don't have a I don't have a social outreach that I can actually reach out to anymore because well, my, my, my Facebook, my, everything I worked on for like 20 years, just gone. Or how, however many years it was that I was on that Facebook account, all of that time is just wiped away. My Gmail, my old phone number, gone. My old ways, gone. My, the old self thinking that I could get out of this mess now, gone. I mean, it's just another mess, another mess, and another mess. Can I get through this attack? Nope. Gone. It's in, it's behind you. You have to keep putting these these evils, these stacks of stacks of spiritual warfare against you behind you. Concrete evidence, but you need to move forward. Concrete evidence for yourself. The world can't see, and those around you can't even see. And so it puts you in a really concrete, trapped way, where the supports that are even out there say. We're in a design to help you look for the sign that you can find so that you can you can surround yourself with people that can take your pain seriously and lift you up out of it and not people that just offer these quick little easy answers that don't actually help. You understand that where it's coming from sometimes that people can't offer any kind of help. They're already in urban blight themselves. So you see, with what people are coming out with these days, it's true. One in five American boys are are spiritually are, have these spiritual ritual abuse attacks setting up on them all of the time. And there's a certain percentage of these boys that know it, and a certain other number of boys that still don't know it. Yet they're targeted in this way. So with these truths coming out, it's not like people are soft struck into the sound, like, oh, I don't know if I should even want to entertain that, that type of thing, but just to make it as concrete as ever, it's really superficial of people to be unable to support those in times of real devastation, in times of real, real hardship. And that's how it places us. So it places you in an incred incredibly heavy and an unjust position, and it's clear why you, why you are feeling the way you are. It's clear why you are feeling that these, these attacks against you have not just been physical assault, but a deep insidious attack to steal up your mind, steal up your spirit, literally soul crushing deep. And that fact is the fact alone that sets it in tone my whole life, not just my resources, not just my money in that account for what I could have created in my life, has been attacked through this hack, but it's affected my brain functions and my heart's health, making it even worse because it's limiting my ability to fight back or even just live the way that I once wanted to. And do you think that I would have had the right to? If I could have, I think that I should have been able to give it that right to not 
have to struggle past some of the worst insidious attacks of my whole life and then coming to find out that it's just been for years and years. Even when it's basic tasks, feeling like you just want to be able to come home and do the dishes or you just want to come home and do, do just finish up a few things before you get to bed and you've got, you've got 10 other things that are gaslit on you, devastating you. You know it's there. You aren't able to get to those dishes now. Oh no, you, you can't get to that now either. There's other things that they pile up on you in the time waste of fashion. It's, it's all through just explicitly knowing your moves, calculating your moves, knowing when you need to sleep, and knowing when you need to move. Especially when the people are around you in your own life aren't even recognizing the severity of what has happened to you. It puts you into a it puts them into a deflection, as, as I've mentioned, often a defense mechanism people use when they don't know how to handle the reality of, of, a, of a serious situation, as serious as mine is. So it's easier for them to just minimize it, avoid it, than confront the truth for what you're dealing with on the serious levels of it actually being a crime violating whole life violations that go up to whole, let's steal up this whole valuability to his life, let's steal up his actual life, and hey, let's poison him up and get him to die, just before he dies, let's make him know that we're stealing away his life, we're gonna go actually walk in places where he walked, so the truth does come out, but the violations that do go so deep, it doesn't make it right for people to deflect on your pain, to deflect on your emotion, deflect on the gravity of being criminal, deflect on the gravity of that said situation as it is, diminished in any way, every single way that you could imagine. The fact that your health is deteriorating after that said attack and your brain isn't functioning all the way as it once did is terrifying in and of itself, and it's even harder, harder to try to find the fair, fairness you're supposed to be able to deal with on that, on that level because you see it as completely unfair to you, completely unfair to you, stripping you of your own abilities, your own abilities, your own mental constructs of how you can get out of this thing, your own abilities to reason through any kind of mental health constructs, and you, and you do, you fight all of the time, but people don't see that, no, people just want to see the deteriorated side of this man, not the side that's been attacking these things all of the time. Functioning as highly as and efficiently as one could in a terrifying situation as itself has been made it makes it even harder and it's unfair. You're left to deal with people on top of that mental focus and emotional constructs that fall out that fall out on you when the worst is at its worst. Instead of people stepping up to fully understand the weight of the, of, of the actual gravity of what you're actually saying is happening to you, they seem to deflect and offer more inadequate, inadequate support. Your need and deserve for serious, consistent support from those around you is, is, is there. You deserve that support. You need those that are there to support you in the ways of your heart. The situation is just the, the desire to get out of it alone. You have the right to, to shelter, you have the right to, to feel like you have a shoulder to lean on, you have the right to feel like you have people that can come into your life when you're being treated this way, when you're being constricted unimaginably. These police officers, they're supposed to be fighting these things, but they aren't. I mean, listen to this, it feels like that uphill battle that your struggle is really worth the truth, that you aren't able to get the truth out there. And just when you're able to get the truth out there, you're starting to make waves. Oh, now you're censored on, now you're censored on Facebook. Now you can't, now you, now you can't use that. Now anything you're trying to say there that, that usually goes dismissed anyway, usually gets deflected on anyway, isn't, isn't even able to be done. So, so it's like you're, you're footing an impossible amount of pain through trying to find small amounts of strength even though it just feels impossible. So you, you get up, you grind, you fall, you fall back down. You get up, you grind, and you fall back down. You're still there, you're still fighting. Even if it doesn't always feel like you are because you're just in, you're, you're just in it. You're in this war that people don't see that you're in. But people are all around you aren't able to see the gravity of that. They aren't able to see the gravity of that and they can't hesitate anywhere else. To reach out, reach out for help when they when they need help. Just these little menial tasks that life throws at us on a regular basis. 
but these things are insidious. These things are trusted friends, professionals, communities who understand that kind of struggle, who know that kind of struggle, who know that kind of pain, and then they're also just offering you more isolation in that pain. Pushing more of the reconciliation on you, back to you, what, what, what are you going to do? Because your truth matters. You deserve that justice and healing. But how are you ba how are you able to go out and get it? How are you able to go out and get it? So I'm gonna continue on with my ministries here. Lord, we often feel like we fight through the fear of the unknown. And that we know that it's not easy just to go away. So we ask that you help us to be trained and ready for the combat of these types of enemy attacks. They are insidious. And help us prepare us, Lord, to not fear one man out here when these enemy attacks come. I want you to have my back, Lord, at all times, at all costs. Protect my heart, or protect all of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, and our souls to be able to continue pressing for that of which something of the unknown to me that I've never had. Something of the unknown to me that I've never even dreamed possible, oh Lord. Help me when my adrenaline feels like it's too much and that takes a toll on my ability to even be able to reason through or clear, clearly see through the reality behind these attacks. I need to, I need to know the motives and how, how I can be prepared to go up against these attacks that the enemy wants to face up with and speak against them in the name of Jesus. So help me shut it down, Lord. Help me shut it down. Help me stop these attacks to do any more hurts or harms to me or anybody else out here any further. Help me shut down these fights, O oh Lord, where it needs to be and can be prevented. But it can't be prevented in my life or anybody else's life if we can't name them and we can't see them or if we can't allow ourselves to work, being able to, to not be constricted behind our own technologies and, and things like that. So I ask the Lord to go into those places as well. I don't think there's any single one place that you can't invite the Lord into in this life to help seek and repair, and the reparative work that it takes to, to find your way out of such a struggling place, of such a struggling decree that's been set up by the strongholds of the evils of this world. And so, I decree that I am strong in the Lord, and I am able to walk through the wilderness with His grace and His mercy in Jesus. And I decree that all sickness and disease leave my body immediately, and to leave anyone's body immediately for those people who are listening. I decree that every demonic power that's been various in your life, working to destroy you, not help you is sabotaged at once. Anything that's set out to devastate you and set you back will only stagger and be set back themselves to face to face themselves fall flat face on the ground. Remind us, O oh Lord, that you are able to use your own powers of anger and discernment so that we may have all of the things that we are needed times that we need them in to be able to, to, to set decrees against a thing happening because I see it established in my life and so many others. So I thank you, Lord, for every knee must bow and every tongue must be set on me now in the blood of the Lord, in the blood of the Lord, in the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua, Jesus, the one true living God that can take those who seek to destroy us and the evil powers that they think they have and bring them down in their plans to pervert, shame, or tap us out of our own tongues, force us to be down and out, even inside of our own mouths. I think that these things are seeds of doubt and planting just that seed of doubt is sometimes all it takes and instead of allowing us to go to go down, Lord, let, let them go down instead of us, Lord. Let them fail now, Lord, as we 
I've been made to fail forward for far too long. And I don't like that saying anymore. I, I am winning forward. I am winning forward. Because we're tired of these hackers, hijackers, trying to steal up all of our energies that we have to take on into this new, new task that we put on daily at times. We have to put on that new, that new armor. I, I, I want new armor daily, or I want new armor daily. Uh, if anything is, is broken or damaged in my armor, I want it repaired immediately. Because I have been so under attack in ways that I haven't been even able to be allowed to, to, to see. People so don't want me to, to see things this way that they they just want to they, they want to play on it being okay for me to go about the regular world the way the regular world wants to play but it's not true so we, we don't want to be anything less than that with fierce challengers competitors that we're we're made to be we want to be better bettering ourselves and we want to be that better than that we know we can be so we ask, O oh Lord, that you don't allow them to get away with any one thing that is in their plans. Uh, currently, to this day, staked up to claims, into, into meddling, or into, into digging into any more areas of my life that can help them to hurt me any further. We ask that they can't succeed in that of anything that isn't absolutely in your favor of protecting us from even the crimes that they wish to take upon us, Lord, that they that they shall not prosper in the ways that we see through them now. And they, they don't have any ways to succeed in their plans that they have taken up within, the, within our lives anymore. In the name of Jesus, today the enemy is defeated. For me in my life, today the enemy is defeated in my mind. Today the enemy is defeated in my finances. Today the enemy is defeated in this relational abuse. Today the enemy is defeated in my family. And today the enemy overall is defeated. So I stand up and tend to decree a thing. Today I step into a new, new glory of faith in the Lord. I'm going to rise up and fight in that which has been set in stages in my body through prayer. I don't even need anyone else's conviction on my side. The only one I need standing by my side is the Lord. I decree that the Lord is my healer. The Lord is my armor. The Lord is my shield in faith. And through that faith, you, O oh Lord, have no one thing can't change about a story and about a thing and anything that you can't handle and that we just want to make that thing so so that nothing can stop it so we ask oh lord to to be vindicated from all the places in our lives that we we were and that we have been moved in things that plague us and plague others for for needless sake for needless sake to, to go into areas of our lives and attack us in these insidious ways and even into the places that they had felt the need to kill us off so quickly within their own decrees made and set, and set to the devil let the light of the Lord Jesus Christ shine right to and through this crime so that we can show others about this tongue thing and how we put it to good use. Today I'm going to fight in that good fight, worship and praise you, O oh Lord, that you have called me back into the passions that I've always had, and it always started with you, always has it started with you, and so I ask that you can take any part in it, or any part around my life that, that can be cleaned up in those ways. The blood of the Lamb, because sometimes we fall back on other plans and we're forced to, we, we feel forced to fall back on these other plans, but these evils, 
these evils and stinking demons are just relentless, oh lord. They keep on coming up into our lives, within our lives, and they are the things that even, that we, we are made so unaware of at all times. And, and, and I believe that that was strategic as well. So Lord, we just feel so lost on our unknown ways to go with what's coming at us in sections and pieces and different areas of our lives. And so we may have, we may have had sensory gut problems, we may have had memory problems, um, other areas of our lives that have been perverted by the enemy and in areas of attack that's been set up on us. Areas that may have been broken of us in ways that we couldn't, we couldn't see to defend. And because we couldn't see to defend, we couldn't move to prevent. And we needed to be able to move so quickly at times that... And we were so tired that being brought up to these places and about to be moving within that kind of power of the Holy Ghost, that we had no idea of that kind of unknown energy that can be channeled through us, oh Lord. So we just want to be able to confirm that energy back in us through, through, through you, oh Lord, that we may be on that cusp of a very profound blessing and a very profound breakthrough in our lives because we know our hearts, Lord, and, and you know our hearts, we should say, that they, that they have been so with you that we set our decrees up in, in, in our battle that we go up against with inside of our distresses and inside of our long standings of fights that we've never given up on. We've never once given up on because we see these blessings as they come and we know that they, they can only be stored up for a thing in you. And so Lord, I want that store of my own. I want my own hard work store. I want my own abilities to do things and move things in ways that I, I see in a vision. Lord, that I feel has been brought up with only you helping me to create. So with that kind of come up, it's been just a harsh, really, really reality where people don't even so much as believe where I've been placed inside of these insidious detriments and devastational times. Where, and sometimes these places where we've gotten into and they've gotten the best of us, we ourselves know it, but we can't see the hacker, and we didn't know that these people were like that with us. Lord, we thought people were, were at least moral and upstanding people, and, uh, and not able to go into places that, that they do go at times, and so when you see it as someone that's so close to us, someone that we love so much, it's gotten us in, into being severely separated from ourselves, even Lord, that we weren't even able to think clear. In that crisis, and the devastation as it came, once it came, it's like it took you away from time, from things you wanted to do for yourself time and time again. Until all of a sudden it's like you're, I'm being, I'm, I'm explored, I'm being explored to be targeted on. And that's where I, I was figuring out where it was coming from. So Lord, the thing, the thing implored to be too much, and too much for me to bear upon my own, is that I'm just asking you, Lord, to bring, bring others into this battle with me biggest, hardest, most hardest struggle I've had because I'm so tired and uh, because it's so much grief and pain that even say our official intelligence even agreed with me that people with the tenth of my story are, 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 are dead. There's, there's nobody out here with my story that it can find and that it felt that it was imperative for me to continue to press and continue to press for that counsel that we're here seeking. I know that my counsel is, is the Lord, but we're here 
to help try and define our lives still, to help try and define a thing which we, we so deserve to be set free from. So we set these decrees, for our minds have been so gone to work by the enemy, just done for. We've been set in stages fighting ghosts and in its places when we're so tired up already that, oh yeah, they had special interests and plans for us, oh lord. So we want to be able to be helped and taken out of that kind of pressure made. And any and all blessings that can be created in an unknown thing to us, O oh Lord. That, that you make it greater than great. Because many unknown things, Lord, that we haven't asked, asked for you for before, to become and be turned into such a monster in our lives that it's not even something that we could seek out to figure out, to get out of. And people, I believe, often end up dead, and they do, I should say. 99.9% .9 of all human beings that have faced, that have been faced up with all of my, all of my play to 10% of what artificial intelligence is fighting, is that they're dead. So it's basically saying you have 90% more reason than the last dead person, that you're still alive to be able to come out here and speak on these things so I ask Lord that you be the mediator through us, through all Christians that stop these kinds of staged up attacks in our lives against us. We wanted to go, go to work. We wanted to go to work on ourselves. We wanted to go just go rollerblading or just have free time to play the drums or we wanted just to come back home and, 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 and clean up the messes that were made in our lives, that were all staged as, as well, to just be left, just to always have to be needing something that, that could be done with the help of, of your loved ones, but when you're in that situation and they're preventing you from anything, you, you, you know it, and you, and like the conversation I had was like, alright, look, you're getting in the way of me now being me, so bye. There was no saying bye. You see what I'm saying? There was no saying goodbye to people that legitimately have reason and need their reason of removing you to remove you. It's a it's a sexual advancement, a very deviant way, if you might add, to, to just even kind of conclusively design your own jealous, envious, sexual life revolving around somebody else's information. So, I mean, it's just sick, oh Lord, that any of these demons, parasites, or unclean things have also been staged up to attack me and my energies. And that you have the inability to conquer that of a thing that shouldn't have ever existed inside of us or on us at all staged, staffed, paid, smear campaigned, targeted, you name it. Any other way, oh Lord, we ask that we don't deserve these things. And the facts that we are bringing to you about these staged up attacks, set up as ghosts against us, that instead, instead of them being able to get away with this, Lord, we ask that you stage up all the angels and the hosts of of, of, of all of the kingdoms, of all of the kingdoms to be used, that need to be used, necessary to use as, as a weapon to be formed against these in the coming days, to create that and to keep, keep them from, keep them, keep the people that these things are happening to from the illnesses within, even the current stance that they're in, Lord, take them out from that. Help them realize that gain and use them, use them for your own, for your own gains. Because these people, that's what they do. I'm trying to turn it around, obviously, but they use these weapons to create your illness and then they commercialize everything out there to monopolize, have us 
monopoly over your life, to steal up and stage up to take away your energy. And they are staging up wicked games over lives, playing both sides of, of the spectrum, angel and demon. And they don't want you to see the mercilessness and their maliciousness at the times of, of their attacks in our lives, but we ask that you can break these abilities so that the strong men who have had in our lives these strong adversaries come up that we have been set in stage and have been set in stages throughout our lives, I might add. That we know what a thing is, that we can call it out, not only standing in a place that we are in, but that we that we can find others in the world who are being bloodily and creatively torn down for things value of this world because we want to bring these people out of these places, oh Lord. And I'm and I I'm, I'm going to make things to make it so. I am going to do things that have the levels of addressing the issues of these concerns like none other. And I am going to go into battle for you, O oh Lord, so that you can do what you've already done in me, and that you can do so much more. So Lord, they wanted this monster in me. They, they didn't want to see the monster in me. They created this monster in me, so you have the power to, to create me into even that much more of a monster in that way, Lord, because I believe that people are 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 better and greater than they are. And I also believe that people are worth living even on this earth today still in the names or in the name of Jesus that we have already whatever we have already have whatever we want and that that goodness that is set in here to achieve the greatness and to achieve those blessings and to achieve to get for those breakthroughs yes lord that you don't let us falter and that you keep us to, to stay down for this ride for a long time for the all for the whole time I know there's dog times where we need to sleep and do other things, but I want to use my voice. And so quicken me up, Lord, so that we can still continue in that way to fight for your honor and, and your kingdom, Lord. We need your guidance in this battle, and we need your discernment and truth. And we believe that the power of your, of, of your word and you, you are all that we need. So yes, Lord, you are the healing in the time mist of notice. You are a medicine as we ask for it. Lord, you are anything that we put faith and trust into. So in these unknown blessings, Lord, we hope that you love us even nicer than we expected. Lord, because we, I, I have never been able actually be able to use my own toys accordingly so I ask that you protect my ability to to play with my toys and my ability to use them towards good in the world and to make this movement and to make this mission come to life so today today and please come on somebody out there I need you to say it with me out loud for a thing unknown and hidden in Christ to be made known to you too today. A thing gestured to be remembered or a new memory to be protected or a new memory to be created. A beautiful one. A beautiful one or a beautiful twelve or however many great memories that the Lord Jesus wants for you to experience today that you get to experience those things to be to be super mightily grateful for the Lord that has given us this power to set decrees and right now like right now in the Lord we are in dire straits we've hindered so much of this plight 
taught and in ways we've been hindered that we don't even we don't even know how how to get out. We've been felt so wiped clean out of ourselves. So that I've been called back into my ministry and my work and a thing I know and it's the same thing that I've always been doing. But I'm going into ministries because I've been praying for what it takes to be that of a blessing that can come out from this kind of unrest, to be that kind of hero that can come from that kind of long standing of serious crimes over me in my life, oh Lord. And uh, we have, we've asked, we want, we want to share this because it's being placed in that light that is what makes it okay to put this into ministry. I've corrected this with prayer is the fact that you have the right to, 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 to do these things when it can help other people in your ministries and so that's why that's why I'm telling people about this is because when you, when you go in and you pray you're in that you're in that rat unrest you're in that way and you're play, praying to get out you're, you're in tears Bless those who wrong you so that you can get help to be so done so you can get help that that you so desperately crave. It's through our actions and our speaking and you are setting a decree on a thing. It's undoubtedly that God wants better for us, that we ourselves can go for ourselves. Sometimes it is that change of plans that God can set in for greater plans to come. And so while that while that is happening, while that transition is happening inside of you, it might not matter to other people. You see what I mean? So that they come and find out these things, it, it is actually over trickling down to hurt them. They're like, oh no, oh no, we can't, we can't have this happen. Of course those are going to move away from the said battles, but the world is already known to be full of battles and some seen, most unseen. But there is a battle raging inside of some of us that's so deeply insidious and devastating that goes beyond identity theft. This isn't just about stolen money, hacked accounts, or an affair over me. It's a constant affair. This is about a life hack of my love, my freedom being hijacked from me. And it's about spiritual warfare in the realest sense of the nature. We live in a time where censorship, hacking, and manipulation have been tools of control and, 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 and domination, where the truth is actively being suppressed. And for, the, for those of us crying out, our voices are being silenced left and right, and our connections are being cut off from us. Our lives are being dismantled piece by piece. It's a true crime to the highest order, if you ask me, of violating our, our very own souls, intentions. It's called the working in iniquities. While many might not see it or understand it, maybe because it's overwhelming to their own struggles, and I get it. America right now is in devastational times, but I'm calling on for those who hear me to understand me and to stand with me. I'm not asking for your help. I'm, I'm, I am asking for your help, but I'm not asking for those who don't want to help. Just in words and in, and, and in no other way, I'm looking for those who can take action and make actions happen. Those that have that influence in their lives already that can make this thing go away and, 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 and no time is flat. Because this isn't just about me, it's about every person that who has had their voices stolen from them, taken from them, their lives hacked and hijacked in ways that drive them to the very edge of themselves, and even into places like suicide, and then, and then these homicides. The system should be protecting us, and for failing to recognize us for what we're saying is a truest crime over us. It's those that are leaving us in these detrimental times that are pushing they're actually pushing us into an article rather than allowing for us to become forthright, allowing for us to, to become 
literal spiritual attackers on the forefront of this kind of battlefield in this way through our ministries and with, uh, with, with love and with truth and with being able to see people in their lives in peace and without being able to see people in their lives in peace in that way I think it's time to listen I think it's time that people listen because what's happening to us could happen to anybody what's happened to me could happen to anybody and I'm not just fighting for myself then, but I'm fighting for all of us because I wasn't made I wasn't supposed to see this stuff I was just supposed to go and die you see what I mean to be taken up out of the way in, in times of my life and, and we need and we need God right now more than ever we need God we need justice and we need each other now more than ever in this world so without a further ado I'm just gonna say I'm happy that you're here and I really I really hope that you did listen to the highlights of my story literally every single song that I put together has a piece of a puzzle piece of this 23 year resolve of mine so it's more than just a cry for help it's a rallying cause because I'm in dire straits right now and I'm about to go under I'm not about to be able to have anything anything at all no food no water no clothes no shelter to everything again because of how this man has been moving and working in my life and it's supposed to be aimed at that way do you see what I'm saying because pushing a person in this kind of plight in, in article after article after article and even police officers who have similar things not even to this detriment that I'm explaining take it take the law into their own hands and they don't care so what I'm saying here is that there's a problem in America there's a huge problem in America and I got a huge fucking problem with it huge problem for any people that don't have a huge problem along with me in this kind of way, deflect, push off, and piss off, because that's all you're doing when it comes to the actual work that we're trying to do here, and actually move like, push back these evils for what the f they are, and you know what the f they are. messed up and it's unconscionable what's gone on here it is messed up and unconscionable what has happened to Matthew Burden and that is my own words it's a dangerous topic to get into but unless people are willing to actually look at it for what it is we're never going to be able to sort this stuff out and we're never going to be able to get through it and it's not designed for us to get through, so I need supporters, and I need supporters right now, right now. I'm in dire straits, and I know a lot of other people are in dire straits right now, but no one, nobody has my plight right now, and nobody, and who is anybody, has the strength to stand firm in their grounds in this from my findings and from even artificial intelligence's findings 99% of these other people at 10% of what I'm saying took it to those levels took it to those places so I'm not going to handle people not handling that I'm going to resolve for my life my love life, my financial life, my identity and I deserve that freedom I deserve to be out here seeking for that help and seeking for your support. Because I deserve it. And nobody is going to tell me otherwise. So anyway, without a further ado, I really appreciate you guys for being here and the supporters I do have. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I've grown bitter and cold. It's just been relenting in my life. And it's really hard to push past this stuff when you're just losing it. You're losing your grounds as you're trying to speak out. I haven't been able to do anything much else because... Because of the attack that recently happened to me. 
that people don't want to believe and also deflect. It's really hard to face those kind of challenges because anyone more in that way, any I can, people don't want to believe in these things, but once they happen to you, you have no choice but to believe in it happening to you. If you go out there and you don't believe that it's happening to you, you just go out there really nilly like some random ass pretty girl or something could be paid enough money to come and spray you up with a good enough amount of whatever. And it's about it's about that that's pretty life life uh, changing for them or whatever. I don't see that people don't have it in them to take it in these actions. And I just don't see that people given these kind of constrictions aren't uh, absolutely in, in just going in seven different directions in their mind. They're frayed up like a motherfucker. They don't know what the fuck to do now because they're murderers. You see what I'm saying? They're, they've actually moved in my life to be a fucking murderer. And then on top of it, you're not able to get the support. So I understand it's hard to put these things into perspective and that the motive is hard to recognize. But that motive is clear. Just sick. It's just sickness. No one deserves. No one would ever consciously think of that, that that would be happening to them is happening to them when they're coming out here saying this kind of thing. Oh, you got you, you just left in left in uh, devastation all over your whole life. So where are you supposed to go? Where are you supposed to go? No one that says that they have an outlet to actually help in these ways is actually moving in any kind of way at all. I think it's to push you into an article they don't want your movement.